These are some various inductors that I have in my, in my parts box. Uh, some of these are new. This one right here is new. It's never been in anything. I bought it uh, off the shelf. These others have been taken out of old TVs and old radios, and these things are getting really hard to find. I mean, even this, I don't think I could buy anymore. But when you're doing radio TV work, uh, some of these things can be very interesting. Also, if you're just doing, for example, you're messing around with resonant frequencies, I've used these a lot. And in fact, I've taken the time to mark them uh, at the, uh, like this one is 0.68 microhenries. But, but the problem is now that these things are really hard to find. And yeah, um, so what happens when things are hard to find? Well, we make our own. For example, I have put this together and it's pretty much a, an exact copy of that. Add your own ferrite, which costs a few cents. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, do you need a 3D printer to do this? No, I did this with a 3D printer, but all you need is the plastic tube of the right size. And you can glue it into a base and you're on your way. Again, if you just need to buy the ferrite, I, I can't remember, I think they were three or four cents a piece. So no big deal. As we progress in this video, we're going to show some other things, some bobbins for winding, and you don't need a 3D printer for that. Here is a sewing bobbin, which is pretty much an ideal size. Um, you can glue a plastic tube inside there, and the ferrite will fit very nicely. You just have to be a little patient because you're going to have to cut slots in there if you want to do a basket weave. If not, I mean, if you don't want to do a basket weave, you can just spool up on these plastic ones. And again, a few cents there. So, um, let's see, what else? Okay, I have done some compound ones. So you can see that this one is a has a uh, compound set of coils. So there's one here, there's one here, and then the ferrite's up here. Also notice that this has a rubber band in it because these old cardboard ones, you can't really put threads in there. So they would uh, put in a rubber band and then they would screw the ferrite in against that. And of course, I have emulated that in my own version. So, okay, get these out of the way and let me show you what I have. Uh, again, this is a duplicate of this. And then we have bigger ones. This version is actually threaded and my printer won't do threads very well, but if you happen to have a plastic tube at home and you have a uh, tap and die set, you can make your own. Uh, I will put the specs out there on these, of course. Let's see, so that's that one. And you say, wait a minute, you're just gonna wind the, the windings on here directly? Oh, well, the answer is yes, you can do that. So, for example, this one we just looked at right here, they just put the windings directly on there, no problem. These others, like this, this is a basket weave, and you're gonna need some kind of a form for that, and of course, I will supply that. Here are some forms for your basket weave, and you can just slip them on here. The collar is four millimeters, so you can orient these so you have a four millimeter spacing. You can flip it around so there's eight millimeter spacing, and then you can flip them both around and have whatever custom uh, spacing you want. Of course, you can add multiples on onto uh, the shaft, and after that, you do your winding, you add your ferrite, and you're good to go. So this one happens to be a threaded version. I also have a, a version which I like the best, which is this one. And I just ran four small ridges on the inside of here. So when you put in the ferrite, you make your own threads. And then I have this version where I just use the rubber band. You feed the rubber band down inside there to emulate this version and yeah. So you have the rubber band like here. We used our own rubber band and you just screw it against the rubber band. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty much the same. It's got the base. I forgot to mention that the base has six holes in it. So you can put your own pins in here, like this one. Uh, yeah, like that one. You can put your own pins in there, solder to them. So again, I've pretty much replicated these old time, these old time uh, inductors, chokes, coils, so that you won't have to try to figure out how to do that on your own. Okay, so I hope you found that useful and interesting in your DIY electronics projects.